All right, so uh, the first thing we need to talk about with digital is uh, digital images, like not digital x-rays necessarily, but just images presented on a screen, okay? And so this section is called creating the digital image. And the first thing we wanna do is, is talk about the nature of digital images. Where do they come from? Okay. It's important that if I say something and it just goes whoosh right over your head, um, you raise your hand, stop me, ask me a question. Okay, I encourage that kind of back and forth. Um, it helps me. It helps me kind of guide me on what is going to be the important stuff to talk about. Right? Um, I'll, I want to focus on the things that you don't understand more than the things you understand well. Right? So let's let's take a look at this. All digital images, whether photographic, radiographic, or fluoroscopic, so whether it's a picture on your phone, an X-ray image on a computer screen or a video x-ray, fluoroscopy, consists of a, and I'm just going to read it, then we'll try to explain, consists of a matrix of numerical values that can be stored in a computer. On the next slide, I'll explain further, but let me continue to read. For radiographic images, the numerical values stored for each cell represent a brightness or density. If we were talking about a, just a, like, you know, TV screen, computer screen, phone screen, um, what you have is a grid. You have a you have a vertical. You have a horizontal and vertical grid with individual little squares called pixels. Right. Each of those squares, each of those uh, cells in that in what we're going that 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 grid is called a matrix. Each of those squares or pixels is going to present a. If it's a color screen like this, it's going to present a color. Okay. Each square presents an individual color. In X-ray, each square on the screen, each pixel has an individual brightness. The pixel can be completely turned off and it's black, okay? Or completely turned on and it's bright white, okay? And, and, and many, many shades of gray in between that, okay? So each of these square cells in a digital image is called a pixel. Interestingly, the word pixel comes from, it's a, it's a, it's a, combined, uh, a combined term from two words, picture element. So pixel means picture element. This is an example, a simple, goofy example of a, of a, of a grid, a matrix. So you can imagine there's, a, you know, we count them here, one, two, three, four, five, six columns across, one, two, three, four, five, six rows down, okay? So this grid being shown here is a six by six matrix, okay? Kind of like your uh, TV screen, computer screen, phone screens are a matrix of square cells running horizontally in columns and vertically down rows. Okay. Each digital image matrix is made up of individual picture elements. Each one of these squares, which have, in this case, in this matrix, there's only 36 squares showing. Um, each of these gets a designated row number and column number. Okay, for example, this top left one that I have the laser pointer on, this is square, uh, this is the square given the, given the uh, location of row one, column one. Okay, it's in the top row and it's in the leftmost column. Okay, it would have its own brightness, it's, a, its own color or brightness. Okay, the one in the bottom right, row six, column six, that's why it says six dash six, row six, column six. This one I'm hovering over now, row three, column three. Column four, row three. Column five, row four. Column one, row five. Each of them has a designated um, location, okay? Because the computer doesn't know where it's at physically on the screen. The computer just knows give row one, column five, whatever value, right? And it knows give column six, row four, a different value, okay? A different, a different color or a different brightness, okay? The location of the pixel is part of the computer file. Each pixel gets its own computer file telling us um, how bright the pixel should be and where that pixel is located in space, okay? And so it's easiest to set this up as a grid. So this is a, three, a six by six grid, six times six, 
36. So this is a 36 pixel matrix. We're just going to keep going. This is like the simplest version, right? Just six, six across, six down. Okay. Here, we've got an, an, a new matrix. Okay. Now we've like gotten rid of the row and column location numbers, right? But you would still know this top left one is column one, row one, right? This one below it is column one, row two, column one, row three column one, row four, right? And you can do that for each of these, okay? But now, in this one, what we're trying to show you is here are the number values representing the brightness or color of that pixel, okay? Each separate pixel on the screen gets a brightness if it's x-ray or a color value if it's a, uh, you know, a, a color TV screen like this one or my computer screen or your phone screens or anything like that. But with this one, they're trying to show you um, an example of what, a, like a cross-sectional image of, uh, in this case, the thigh would look like. So we'd have in the, you know, you take take a thigh, ham bone, right? Cut it right down, right in half, right? Uh, cross-section, and you look look at it like that, like a disc. Okay. You notice that the center has the bone, right? And then around the bone is muscle. Okay. And outside of the muscle and all the soft tissue is just black background. Okay. So if you notice, all these cells that have the label zero, in, these, in this case, each of those cells with the label zero, the pixel would be turned off, okay? Meaning the, in that spot on the computer screen, nothing's happening, no power's going to that pixel, it's off, it's black, okay? It's black background, in other words. So all these zeros represent pixels in, uh, in the matrix that have value zero, meaning they're turned off. Black background. So like when your phone screen's turned off, right? Nothing's happening, all the pixels are shut. Oh, there we go. All the pixels are shut down, right? Black background, nothing's happening. As soon as I turn the screen on, every pixel's gonna be energized given some color, and on, if it's my phone, right? And, and depending on what part of the picture it is, each pixel's gonna have a different color. Okay. In X-ray, we don't do, do color, right? We do shades of gray, okay? So our pixels on our, on our, on our x-ray images go from being black, completely turned off, all the way through several thousand possible shades of gray to being um, bright white. So we have bright white all the way to black, okay, and, and, and thousands of shades of gray in between. You look at all the ones labeled 11, they're going to be a little bit turned on. The pixels, each pixel late with the label 11, with the value of 11, is a little bit turned on. So kind of like a little bit of gray, okay? So you can see these on the digital images, right? I'm uh, sorry, these film images that I have on this view box, right? There's a black background. This is for this digital image. That black background, each pixel representing that black background would be completely turned off, okay? Then we have, like, soft tissue, not, stuff that's not bone, but it's like muscle tissue, okay? And it's kind of like a lightish gray color, okay? In this case, dark gray, right? So each of these ones with the label 11 would be like a dark gray, soft tissue. Then, right in the center, and kind of a, as, as much as it can be for this simple matrix, a circle shape, okay? Representing where the bone would be. Now the areas where the bone would be, bone shows up as you see on x-ray, um, compared to everything else, bone is the brightest white thing. Okay, it's not bright white, but it's the brightest whitest thing on the x-ray. So on this picture, the pixels are turned way, way on. Not as high as they can be, but they're turned on to 555. It's a, it's a numerical number value representing a lighter, a much lighter shade of gray, closer to a white. Okay. So we have bright white, we have gray, then we have the black of the background. Okay. So again, this is a simplified cross section showing you just picture, uh, so showing you just number values, which would represent in each of those a shade of gray. Okay. Our next thing. There's two matrices shown here, matrix A and matrix B. You can see pretty plainly and clearly that there's a difference between them. Okay. Do, do each, does each matrix take up the same physical amount of space 
Like if I superimpose them on each other, would they overlap? Yeah, they, the, the square making up the entire matrix for A is the same size as the square making up the matrix for B, okay? They have the same physical size. In other words, for, they have the same physical area. They take up the same amount of space, okay? But what you notice is when you look at each individual pixel, each cell in these matrices, the pixels in A are bigger than the pixels in B, okay? For a given physical area, the larger the matrix size, the smaller the pixels. If you count the number of pixels in B and count the number of pixels in A, you're going to count more of them in B. Okay, there are more pixels in B. These both have the same size area. They take up the same space. Think about it like this. These are two screens, right? Both screens are the same size. Okay? Screen A has big pixels. Screen B has small pixels. Okay? We can fit more pixels in screen B. It's smaller. Okay? What this is going to mean for us is screen B will have better Spatial resolution. Spatial resolution is one of your terms to define, by the way. Spatial resolution is our ability to distinguish fine details. Spatial resolution is the ability to distinguish fine detail. You will be able to see more detail with screen B than with screen A. If we're looking at the same picture, right, trying to put up the same picture on A and B, we're going to be able to see it more clearly on B. I think probably, you know, uh, for, for years now, TVs, phones, computers have all had excellent spatial resolution, okay? You know, we're buying 4K and like 8K TVs now, right? Um, just bananas resolution, yeah? And, um, but it hasn't been like that for forever. Not that long ago, you could buy pretty poor resolution TVs. They were they're obviously cheaper, right? You pay more and you get more. Um, and, and you can know, you could notice, right? Old, older phones, older computers, older, um, older TVs. You can notice um, when the spatial resolution is lower because the pixels are bigger and it's easier to see those individual pixels, okay? The smaller the pixels are, the better our spatial resolution is, okay? The better our ability to distinguish fine detail is. So matrix A is a six by six matrix, 36 pixels total. Matrix B, 12 by 12, 112 times 12, 144, 144 pixels. So there are, in other words, more pixels in B than A, giving us better detail in B when compared to A. Ignoring the numbers for right now, those numbers would be like each pixel, remember each pixel gets its own number value stored in a computer, right? So the, the computer, by the way, the computer doesn't know, in the computer file, there's not a, you know, a label that this pixel is black, right? It's just a number, okay? The computer knows to turn that number into a amount of brightness for that pixel or, or a color for that pixel, but the color is not logged in the computer. The color, we don't, the computer file for, you know, this pixel does not say medium gray, okay? It says 75, right? And the computer knows to present cer a certain shade of gray when the value is 75, the one I'm hovering over right now. Okay, so each pixel gets its own value. For a, physical, for a given physical area, the larger the matrix size, the smaller the pixels. You guys okay with that so far? So All right. Each pixel, excuse me, each pixel gets its own value? Mm -hmm. Each pixel has its own separate value, a number stored as a computer file for that pixel that number will be the brightness for that pixel in radiography. In, in, in computer, or sorry, in TV screens, computer screens, phone screens, that number for that pixel is a color, okay? Unless you're viewing a black and white image, in which case it's a shade of gray. But um, that number is gonna be a color, okay? Like on this screen, right? You know, I've got pixels that are showing me each of these separate letters and those are showing up as a green, right? So every pixel, in this letter that's representing this letter, letter F is all showing the same, all has the same number, which in which gives us that shade of green. Okay, all these ones that are gray, right, have a different number. Every pixel in this gray area has its own number, right, giving us the shade of gray. 
Every pixel where that little yellow dot is is giving us, has the same value giving us that little yellow dot, each separate tiny pixel. And that's the thing, right? These matrices that we're showing, the pixels are big, like, you know, they're like the size of my thumb, right? Um, pixels in real life are very, very small, right? You get several pixels, you know, um, um, per, per millimeter, right? They're very small. That's why we, we can't see the individual pixels. Like, I can see them if I come up, like, real close to the screen here, right? But you have to get very close to the screen to see them. That's why we get nice, you know, round images that don't look like Minecraft images, right? Everything's all blocky and pixelated. Um, we get, you know, nice clear images because our pixels are very small. You know, where this matrix in B is 12 by 12, the matrix on the TV is, you know, a thousand by a thousand, something like that, right? Very, very many pixels. Uh, on, on these TV screens, computer screens, phone screens, when compared to this toy one we're looking at here. Okay, the next slide I'm about to show you is going to illustrate that I, the idea that for a given physical area, the more pixels, meaning the larger the matrix, the smaller the pixels are, and the greater the spatial resolution or sharpness of the image is. Remember, spatial resolution is your ability to, to distinguish fine detail. You can, you can refer to that ability to distinguish fine detail, spatial resolution, offhandedly as sharpness. That's why they put it in quotes. Technical term is spatial resolution. You can think about it like sharpness. How sharply can I see details? Yeah, you know, um, uh, in, phone cameras have gotten so good now that like you probably don't even pay attention to the megapixel value of your cameras on your phones, right? Like, does anybody know how many megapixels their phone camera has? No? Backtrack 10 years and everyone, I promise you, would know the megapixel value of their phones because that was it mattered back then, right? You know, I, I, a one megapixel phone camera compared to a five megapixel phone camera, you're going to have a noticeable difference in the number of uh, in the spatial, in the detail of the image, right? Because the spatial resolution changes. Now they're so good, we don't even, we don't even care, right? They're all excellent, right? You cannot get a bad phone camera now uh, because it's just gotten cheaper and easier to make these um, detectors for the cameras. But again, backtrack 10 years or so, we would notice this. Okay, by the way, megapixel. Mega means a uh, million. So it's five million pixels, three million pixels. Okay, just, just so you... Mega means million. Mm -hmm. So five megapixel will be a five million pixel detector on your camera. Okay, so let's take a look at this next slide giving us three different images. Um, I see it in the textbook here. Uh, a couple of you guys got it open. What page is this in the textbook? And what edition are you guys in? Third edition. If you're in the third edition of the text, it's on 459, this slide I'm about to bring up, this one. If you have the fourth edition, help us out. I don't know what page it's on. 407 in the fourth edition. All right, so one more time. If you have third edition, it's page 459. If you have fourth edition, it's page 407. Anyways, but it's on screen if you'd like. Um, notice it's the same picture of this, of this girl, right? Three pictures of this girl. In A, the matrix is a 26 wide by 36 pixel tall matrix. There's 26 pixels across the screen, 36 pixels up, going up the screen, okay? And what do you notice if, if you didn't see anything else, if I just gave you this, what can you tell me? Like if, if you didn't see the others first, what could you tell me? What, what are we looking at? A blurry, A blurry picture. A blurry face, right? You can't tell much about their face, yeah? You know it's probably a human, right? You know they probably have long hair and are probably wearing a white shirt with a, you know, like a, like a darker collar, right? A darker collar around it. But you can't tell that much, right? You can't get fine detail. You are unable to distinguish fine detail. In other words, this image doesn't have sharpness. It lacks sharpness, okay? In B, B is a 51 by 64 matrix. So we look at B, now you can distinguish a little bit more. You can see that she's smiling, right? You can make out the shape of her nose and cheeks a little bit better. Um, we just have more detail. You can start to distinguish almost individual hairs, or at least the shadows in the hair, right? Um, we're increasing our ability to distinguish fine detail. And then you get to C, 
C is 200 by 251. And now we can see a lot, a lot better, right? Uh, I'm noticing now that she's not wearing a white shirt with a darker collar. She's wearing a, a necklace, right? And a, 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 lower, a lower top, uh, kind, of, and kind of a V-neck top, right? I can see more now. I can see white teeth. I can see shadows on her face. I can see her eyes individually. I can even see the sclera, the white of her eye, okay? Um, I can see much, much more detail now when compared to the first two options. They're the same physical size, right? Each of these three pictures are the same size, okay? Picture A was taken uh, and presented on a, a small matrix, less pixels. Picture B was presented with more pixels, and pixels, picture C, an, an even larger matrix. If you multiply these numbers out, you can see how many pixels are in the matrix, but we don't even care about that. We care that the numbers are getting bigger for each of these. And as the number of pixels gets bigger for this given physical area, um, the detail improves. The sharpness gets better. So the more numbers, the more sharp? Yeah, more pixels, the sharper it is. Absolutely. So that's, been a, that, that's the idea, right? Um, to, view detail, to view more detail, you want screens uh, with more pixels, right? Higher, higher uh, larger, matrix, larger matrices. You also need detectors with large matrices too, detectors that are able to detect small detail, okay? Because, you know, if I go back, you know, if you got your, your, your old pictures from 10 or 12 years ago, right, Facebook pictures or whatever, right, the detail is pretty bad, right? It doesn't matter if you put that on a 8K TV screen, okay? It's still going to have bad resolution, okay? Because the it was taken on a camera with poor resolution, okay? Um, you know, the webcams on our old computer, on the older computers, right? Just awful, right? Um, and, and so if you try to take those pictures and put them on any screen now, it, this picture's not going to magically get better, right? It was taken on a detector with a small matrix, okay? Um, so you need the detector, camera detector or x-ray detector to have a large matrix, as well as the viewing screen, the screen you're looking at everything on, to have a large matrix as well. The detector has its own matrix, okay? And every screen that you present something on has its own matrix. So yeah, you can have you can have the best detectors in the world, the best camera in the world, right? You have a 30 megapixel digital camera. If I try to put that 30 megapixel digital camera picture on a low resolution computer monitor, I just won't be able to see detail. And the other way around is true, right? I can use the best TV screen in the world but if I took the picture on a you know 1998 webcam, okay, I'm gonna have poor resolution. We need both. Okay, you need both the detector to have good res spatial resolution, and you need the viewing screen to have good spatial resolution. Right now, we're just talking about the general idea of spatial resolution. We're not specifying to like screen or detector. Um, yeah, I think that's important though to, to remember if, if you can. But right now, we're just talking about the general idea of the matrix of pixels. Let me take a, let me show you um, the relative effective spatial resolution of different imaging modalities. An imaging modality is a way of doing uh, of imaging the body. There's you know um, ultrasound that's its own imaging modality. There's X-ray, there's MRI, there's CT scanning, nuclear medicine. Right? These are all different modalities, different modes of taking images of the body. Okay. So let's look at the relative um, pixel. Uh, values and spatial resolutions of these different methods. Nuclear medicine has very, very poor spatial resolution. It has a matrix of about 64 by 64 pixels. Very poor spatial resolution. If this were, if you were trying to take, use this to, you know, put up pictures of, you know, real, real pictures of the world, um, it'd be very, very low resolution. Okay. In nuclear medicine, we don't need or want good spatial resolution. Okay. All we need to know is where in the body, roughly, is that um, radioactive material attaching, okay? Nu what they do with nuclear medicine is, we do nuclear medicine for people that have uh, cancers usually. So they have some cancer in their body. It's too small for us to find, okay? So what we do is we take and prepare a radioactive element that will attach itself. It's been programmed. 
to attach itself to cancer, okay? And we inject it into, into the body, okay? And that little radioactive element goes floating around the bloodstream until it finds the cancer and then attaches to the cancer, okay? And then at that point, that little radioactive element will begin to just emit particles, real radioactive particles, okay? And we surround the patient with the detector, okay? So the, the patient is emitting the radiation, and we're just detecting where it's coming from, okay? We need to roughly be able to detect where on the body that radiation is being emitted from so we can tell where the cancer is hiding in their body, okay? Nuclear medicine doesn't need excellent spatial resolution. Nuclear medicine just needs to tell us roughly where things are, okay? Sonography. You know what they're doing in the room behind us, right? About 128 by 128 pixels. It's better. It has better spatial resolution than nuclear medicine, but it's way, way lower resolution than um, MRI and CT and, and regular X-ray is. So, you know, you can see the baby, the size of the baby, shape of the baby. You can see any abnormalities with the baby, but you're not distinguishing fine details about that baby. MRI and CT scans have lower spatial resolution, less detail than X-ray. This down here at the bottom, which is labeled as DR and CR, is X-ray imaging. <clears throat> MRI and CT, about a 512 by 512 matrix. So you can get plenty of detail, everything you need to see, but no more. Yes? One more time? Is it, is it, is it reflecting? Um, good. So 512 by 512, better than sonography, better than nuclear medicine, but not the best resolution that you can have. CR and DR, by the way, uh, DR stands for direct radiography. CR stands for computed radiography. These are both different types of digital x-rays. We're going to be explaining these in the upcoming lecture, DR and CR. DR and CR have resolutions comparable to regular computer and, t and TV screens, okay? Roughly 1,000 by 1,000 pixels or more. So he says plus, right? So uh, we have excellent spatial resolution for DR and CR. Interestingly, you cannot and will never be able to have as good of, spat as good of spatial resolution as you could with film images. Film imaging is uh, there's, there's just no comparison. Film imaging has better spatial resolution than CR and DR will ever be able to have, okay? It's because we can show things on these pieces of film that are molecules in size, okay? We have excellent spatial resolution. Effectively, our pixels, which there are no pixels because it's a piece of film, uh, are what would be like a pixel are molecules in size, okay? So they're teeny tiny. Um, we can't make pixels that are that small. Okay, so spatial resolution will always be better for film. There are definite advantages for digital, which is why we have moved to digital. We don't, turns out we don't need like infinitely good spatial resolution, okay? We need just pretty good spatial resolution in order to do what we're doing. So digital is going to be the preferred method of getting x-ray images done nowadays, um, just because everything else it does is so much better. But... It is interesting to note that, you know, this old way of taking x-rays with film that was invented in 1895 and we've been using since, uh, that old way has gone away, but is still the best when, it's, when spatial resolution is concerned, where spatial resolution is concerned. Let's get some uh, relationships talked about here. Uh, so let's say this. For a given physical area in which an image is being displayed, so a screen, that's a fancy way to say on the screen, right? For a given physical area in which the image is being displayed, image matrix size by pixel count is inversely proportional to pixel size. So in other words, as the number of pixels goes up, for a given physical area like this TV screen, 
the pixel size goes down. Okay, that's an inverse relationship. If I have more pixels, they get smaller. Okay, so like matrix A and matrix B here, the ones we looked at earlier, are the same physical size, right? Matrix B has more pixels. Because it has more pixels for that physical given physical area, the pixels are smaller. Matrix size is inversely proportional to pixel size. The larger the matrix, the smaller the pixels. And it's directly proportional to spatial resolution. The larger the matrix, the better our spatial resolution is. In other words, when you go buy a TV or computer screen, right, buy the one with the most pixels, okay? It's going to have the best spatial resolution, the best detail. Anyone have any questions on those, relation, those two relationships? Can you say again? Yeah. So when matrix size goes up, the number of pixels on the screen, pixel size goes down. Yeah, when matrix size goes up, more, ma more pixels, the size of the pixels goes down. When matrix size goes up, pixel size goes down. And I like to point with my thumb so you, you can see the two things are going the opposite direction, right? More pixels on the screen, smaller, they're, they're going to be smaller. the number of total pixels you're counting in the box. In the box. Yeah. Not the width and length of the screen. It's not the width and length of the screen in inches or anything like that. It's the number of pixels you count in width in the screen. Uh, on the screen, yeah. So we're imagining that, you know, this matrix here takes up the entire screen, yeah. right? And if we imagine it takes up the entire screen like we just did to it, right? Mm -hmm. We can count the number of pixels it has. Yeah. And that number of pixels is the matrix size. Okay. okay, so we count 36 pixels here, right? Our matrix size is 36 pixels, okay? Over here, we count 144 pixels, 12 across, 12 down. Our matrix size is 144. Both of these two that we just showed have the same physical area. They take up the same amount of space, right? But there's more pixels in B, so the pixels are smaller. Matrix size went up, pixel size goes down. Okay. Yes, good, good. No, it's good. It's, it's, I promise you, more, more, more than people than you have that same question. So always ask it. Okay. So let's say a couple things and we'll take a quick break. Ultimately, what really matters for spatial resolution is pixel size. Again, just to kind of drive this home, the smaller the pixels, the sharper the resolution. Now, the effective pixel size can be changed by changing field of view. This can be done like, you, you know this because if you've ever tried to zoom in on a picture, what happens as you zoom in closer and closer on a picture? It gets bigger, right? But then it also gets blurrier. You lose detail, you lose spatial resolution, okay? And there's a limit, right? You're like, you know, most, um, most programs, most software won't let you like infinitely zoom in to a single pixel, right? right. Um, but it'll let you keep zooming in and eventually like it's just blurry what you're looking at, right? You've lost spatial resolution. That act of zooming in is, is called changing your field of view, okay? Changing your field of view, in other words, magnifying the image um, will, will affect the spatial resolution. You know, on um, it's usually on like crime dramas and things like that, where they like have some criminal they caught on like a like a security cam, and they're like enhance, mm -hmm. and then it like zooms in and it like gets clear again, like enhance, and they like keep like infinitely zooming in until they got like a clear picture of the person's face. Mm -hmm. That can't happen. That's just complete fake Hollywood magic. Okay, you can't. You know, if you keep zooming in, it was if it was blurry to start with, and you zoom in, it's not going to like magically get clear. Okay. Um, it's just fake movie magic, right? But that sort of illustrates what, what we're talking about, right? As you zoom in, it should get blurrier, not clearer, right? Yeah. Yeah, there are, um, 
there are softwares that can kind of help smooth out things, but not like you would see on, on, the, on those, those TV shows or movies where they like zoom in cra and all crazy to someone's face and all of a sudden it becomes a clear picture of like their face or like the, you know, the identifying tattoo that they have or something like that, right? It just doesn't work like that. Okay. Is, is changing field of view, yeah. Another example of changing the field of view is changing the display area, moving from like one screen to another screen, right? Um, my computer screen has different spatial resolution than the screen I'm presenting on, okay? I don't know if you guys know what my computer screen looks like. You don't see the same thing that I see, okay? I see like a teeny tiny little box where my where the, what I'm looking at for you guys to see, and I've got my other notes and stuff off to the side, right? My spatial resolution for this is not as good as, as that is, right? That has more pixels, right? Also, those pixels are bigger, okay? So there's a little bit of a give and take there. Okay? There's, because, the screen, because the screen is physically bigger, right? There's a little bit of a give and take. There are times where I can see things more clearly than you can see them, right? Because one, I'm closer, my field of view is smaller, but I've got really good resolution on my screen. That field of view is much larger, has pretty good resolution. So there's, there's, there's some give and take here though. But the point is, is that these are two different um, matrices, right? The matrix on my screen is different than the one on that screen. So we see slightly different spatial resolution. Something that may look slightly pixelated, especially if you come up really close to the screen, something that may look slightly pixelated on here may not look slightly pixelated on my screen. Okay. Um, the, as I just sort of was trying to um, elucidate, these relationships are somewhat complicated by the fact that there are different types of hardware and software matrices, fully explained in Chapter 34, which is next class. Okay, so we're going to pause here.